Daniel 7. I love this book. I kept looking because the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking, I kept looking until the beast was slain and the body was destroyed and given to the burning fire. Come on. Okay, now listen to this. Verse 12. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away. Now this is very important that you get this part. Their dominion, everybody say their dominion, dominion. was taken away, but an extension of life was granted to them for an appointed period of time. Okay, so their dominion's taken away. So they don't have dominion, but their life is extended. Did you get that part? Okay, now verse 13. I kept looking, this is the key. I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like the Son of Man was coming. Everybody say, Son of Man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion. Everybody say dominion. dominion. Glory. Everybody say glory. glory. And a kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. That all peoples, nations, and men in every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Okay, you got that? Okay, so here's the question. When? When does this happen? To him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. That all peoples and nations and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. The question is when? Okay, so let me read on. Verse 18. But the saints of the highest one will receive a kingdom, possess the kingdom forever for all ages to come. Verse 21. I kept looking until the horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them. Everybody say, boo. boo. Verse 22, until. Yeah. Until. Okay, this is a very important verse. This is a very important word, until. Okay, this, this word until is like the cross of Jesus Christ. Like, before the cross, I was a sinner. After the cross, I was a saint. <laughs> I mean, this word until is the Jordan River. Before the Jordan River, I was in the wilderness. After the Jordan River, I was in the promised land. Are you with me? Yeah. Listen to this. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one, and the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. Okay, listen. On this side of the until, the saints are overpowered by the horn. On this side of the until, it says that the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. That's a big until. Because on this side, the horn is waging war with the saints and overpowering them. And on this side, dominion, glory, and a kingdom that lasts forever is given to the saints of the highest one. So the question is, when? When is the question? Okay, well listen, it goes on. Verse 25, he will speak out, speaking of the devil, against the Most High, and wear down the saints of the highest one. But, that's a big but. But, the court will sit for judgment. His dominion will be taken away and annihilated and destroyed forever. Now, did you notice that it doesn't say that he will be destroyed? Remember, we already read Back in verse 12, it says, For the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but extension of life was given to them. In other words, God said, Listen, you have no more power, but you have to live on the same planet as the people you tormented. It's like taking a police officer and putting him amongst the criminals he arrested. The Lord said, Listen, before I throw you into the lake of fire, here's going to be your first punishment. I'm going to put you in the middle of the people you tormented, and I'm going to take away your power. Because now I can fulfill the word where I said, you'll bruise his heel, but he'll crush your head. So listen to this. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints, of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all dominions will serve and obey him. Okay, the question is, when? 
when. How do we know when this is supposed to happen? Okay, we know that the Ancient of Days has to come, and he has to pass judgment in favor of the saints. Got it? And what's the second clue? And the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. Okay? As soon as that happens, we know that sovereignty, dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the saints of the highest one. Got me? Okay, so let's read a few verses then. You can write them down. Matthew 24, 14, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached on the, in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Mark 12, 34, then Jesus saw that he had answered intelligently. He said to them, you are not far from the kingdom of God, you are not far from the what? Kingdom of God. Luke 4, verse 43, it says, But he, speaking of Jesus, said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for I had sent for this purpose. Luke 9, 2, proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. Luke chapter 10, verse 9, the kingdom of God has come near you. Luke chapter 12, verse 31, but seek first his kingdom and all these things shall be Add it to you. Verse 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John chapter 3, verse 5. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. To these he presented himself alive after suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over 40 days, and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 8, verse 12. But when they had believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women alike. Acts 19, 8. He entered the synagogue, continuing to speak to them boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. Acts 20 verse 25. Now behold, I know that among you I went out preaching the kingdom of God and you will no longer see my face. Colossians 1 13. He rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us, currently transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28. Since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken let us show gratitude by which we may offer God an acceptable sacrifice with reverence <laughs> Daniel chapter 7 the horn was waging war against the saints and overpowering them until the ancient of days came and judgment was passed in favor of what the saints of the highest one and the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom when did the ancient of the days take a seat and pass judgment in favor of the saints as the highest one? I can tell you when. It says in Colossians that when Jesus died on the cross, he publicly displayed the devil. He defeated him on the cross. He publicly displayed him as powerless. And the decrees that were made against us were canceled. That's why it says in Daniel chapter 7 that the Ancient of Days took his seat and judgment was passed. Decrees were made in favor of the saints of the highest one. And then the time arrived for the saints to take possession in the kingdom. When you were born again, you were born into a kingdom. And then you were told to preach the kingdom wherever you go. And it was the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 127 times preach the kingdom. Heal the sick, raise the dead, say the kingdoms come near you. I would like to suggest that Daniel 7 is not in the millennium. But the kingdom has already come. I'm not saying there's not a second coming. I'm saying the kingdom has come. And you've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness. And you are currently living in the kingdom of his beloved son. And you are seated in heavenly places with Christ. And he's already put everything under your feet. That is a past tense. He's given you every blessing in heavenly places in Christ. It's already happened. And so the ramifications of that is this. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will given to, be given to the people, the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and his dominion will serve and obey him. 
Okay, turn to Romans 8, verse 14. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you are sons of God. You've not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you've received a spirit of adoption as sons, which, which we cry, Abba, Daddy, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, listen, if we are children of God, you've got to get this. If we are children of God, listen, don't pass it by like something you've read a million times. If you're a child of the person who's God, then you are heirs. Heirs also. Heirs of God. Fellow heirs with Christ. And if deeds you suffered with him, so that you may be also glorified with him. For the anxious longing of creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For creation itself was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because him who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that all of creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. What's he saying? You know what he's saying? He's saying that the devil knows who you are. And God knows who you are. Creation knows who you are. It's only you who don't know who the heck you are. And all of creation is groaning. See, when Adam and Eve sinned, it wasn't just humans that were cursed. It was creation. Remember, he said to Adam, you will till the ground. You're going to work hard, but you know what it's going to do? It's going to yield thorns and thistles. That's why Jesus said, preach this gospel to all creation. The gospel's not just for people. It's for creation. Isn't that interesting? What is creation groaning for? It's groaning for the sons of God to be revealed. Why? Because Adam subjected creation to fertility. What does that mean? It means that it became purposeless. You know in the book of Ecclesiastes where it says, it's all vanity? Same word. It means it's all for nothing. But remember Romans 1 said God's invisible attributes, his eternal power, his divine nature are clearly seen in what God made. In other words, creation had a purpose to display the glory of God. But what happened when Adam fell? The earth itself was cursed. And what's it waiting for? It's saying, listen, you got released from the curse on the cross. And we're waiting for the sons of God to be revealed so that we can be released from the curse of slavery into the freedom of the children of God. How did the verse start out? Remember Romans said, we're no longer enslaved to fear, but now we're released to freedom because we're children of God, joint heirs of Christ. Creation goes, that's great for you, but we're still under a curse. Until you figure out who you are, we're under this curse, and we want to be a new creation too. That's why the gospel was to be preached to all creation, so that creation could be released from the curse and be released back in to its purpose, which was to give glory to God. When does creation get released from the curse? As soon as you figure out who you are. What's the point? You rock, you just don't know it. You were born to reign. What Genesis chapter 1 be fruitful and multiply and take dominion. Daniel chapter 7. Dominion, glory, and a kingdom shall be given to the saints of the highest one. What is Daniel saying? I see a time when the original creation, the original call of creation was restored to the children of God. When's that supposed to happen? It already happened. Well, isn't that in the millennium? No, that's not in the millennium, I'm sorry. It says, when this ancient of days took his seat, judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one, and the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. I'm sorry, that already happened. That already happened. That's, you can't argue that that hasn't happened. It was the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You got born again so you can come into the kingdom. You got transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son. 
You've already received every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You've received, you've become children of God. No longer are you under fear of slavery, but now you've been released as sons in which we cry, Daddy, Father, now you're heirs of God, fellow heirs of Christ Jesus. That's already past tense. It happened. If you're waiting for that to happen, you're waiting for nothing. Go make a withdrawal on your account. The reason why you can heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons is because of who you are. Jesus didn't say, pray for the sick. He said, heal the sick. Well, only God can heal the sick. That's why he said, be imitators of God. Listen, I can't heal the sick. Only God can heal the sick. That's right. You are sons of God. In fact, Jesus quoted the psalmist when he said, you are gods, and the word gods is little g. Ye is big G, and you are little g. You're little g, God. I understand we're not Mormons. Don't take this too far. I'm saying that before you were born again, you were created a little lower than the angels. But when you got born again, the angels serve you. Now you became heirs of salvation in which the angels serve. You didn't make you this. Listen, you didn't make you this. If you did, then you would be arrogant. All you're doing is receiving what Daddy did for you. Daddy did this for you, and that's why you can say, if you don't believe me on account of my words, then believe me on account of my works, because greater works shall you do when I go to be with the Father. What's the point? The reason why you do miracles is because your Daddy is God. Jesus never said, go out and pray for the sick. He said, go heal the sick. Only God can heal the sick. You are heirs to the throne. You're acting like God because you are children of God. Your daddy is in charge of the universe. Listen, if you teach people to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons, and you don't teach them who they are, then they have a performance-based identity. But as soon as you figure out who you are, you're like, if that's who I am, where's my power? The reason why miracles didn't pass away with the apostles is because you are children of God. From the time Jesus died on the cross to the time he returns for you, you will still be a child of God. And you only know how to act supernaturally because your daddy is the God of the universe. When you act like God, you're being yourself. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 5, be imitators of God. What are you doing? I'm acting like my daddy. Creation is waiting for you to get it. It's under a curse because you don't know who you are. Well, you know, we don't want to build ourselves up too big. Just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just, you know, I'm just lucky to get in. That's what I am. Well, that's a really weird way to act when Jesus said in John 17. Father, the glory you gave me, I want you to give them. I mean, I'll believe in prayer, but I don't know if he answered that one. Do you think that Jesus said to the Father, the glory you gave me, I want you to give to them, John 17. And the Father said, I don't think so. Ain't going to do it. The only reason you have a bad thought in your head it's because you have a devil who wanted to be what you became. He said, I will be like God. I will raise up into the assembly of the Most High, and I will be like God. And God said, no, you won't. You'll be thrust down. Where were you seated? In heavenly places. What did he want to be? I will sit in the assembly of the Most High. God goes, no, you won't sit in the assembly of nothing. You're going to the earth. He thrust him down to the earth. And then what did he do? He took away his power and let him live. What? So that he can watch. This is part of his punishment was watching billions of people on the planet be made in the image of God. The very thing he wanted. He said, I will be like God. God goes, no, you won't. I will put you down on the planet. I will put you on this earth and I will make billions of people like me. 
They will be made in my image and in my likeness. You will never forget me because they will step on your head time after time. And then when, I get, when they get done tormenting you for thousands of years, then I'll throw you in the lake of fire. You were born to torment the tormentor. The devil's after me, the devil's after me, the devil's after me. Dude, no. You got it all screwed up in your brain. I don't know what to do. I'm under attack. Well, if you submit to God and resist the devil, I heard he runs. But the devil's like a dog. As long as you run, he'll chase you. He doesn't care if he's a little fifi dog and little fluffy duffies. If he yaps, yap, 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 and you run, he will run after you. Have you ever thought of what would happen if you just stand like, what are you doing? Man, you don't realize I have troubles in my life. Well, you can always tell the size of a man by the size of a problem it takes to discourage him. Do you have a trouble or do you have a miracle in your life? It looks like a problem. Well, listen, every miracle was a problem at one time until it became a miracle. You've got to have a mess before you can have a message and a test before a testimony. Listen to this. I'm almost done. Psalm 16.3 As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the majestic ones, and in whom is all my delight. <laughs> You're not nameless or faces. You have a name and a face. Isaiah 55.5 Behold, you will call a nation you do not know, and a nation which knows you not will run to you. Because of the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, He has glorified you. That's a good word. You rock. And you didn't even do it to you. 